Hey guys, how you doing today? Today we're working on my 96 BMW R1100RT. Um, here's the problem we have. As you can see, I've got a little rag here underneath the master cylinder. Master cylinder started leaking. I noticed these marks running down the on the paintwork, which I don't like, but um, this bike has had a rough life. If you've watched my other videos, it's been down on this side before by a previous owner and has done a little scuff up damage. And it looked like somebody tried to do a repaint job and didn't do very well with it. But this is my bike I commute back and forth to work on a lot. And I, I take it out for some longer rides too. It's a great bike, runs and rides great. It's just not the best looking bike in the world. But what happened, my master cylinder started leaking um, I noticed this the other day, so I haven't been riding it because I like to have brakes. Um, and the brakes still work fine, but, um, you know, don't want to take that chance of going down the highway and losing all your brake juice and having some issues and not being able to stop and, like, run into a train or a brick wall or something. That doesn't sound like my type of fun. That I'd like to have so we're going to rebuild this I bought some parts for it and um, some rebuild parts so we're going to take this apart now the instructions that I had read on this particular part said you don't have to remove it from the bike you can kind of do it all on the bike but um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet or not but just wanted to show you what I'm going to be working on and we'll take you along for the rebuild on this. Hopefully it'll help somebody out along the way. Okay, so hope you can see up under here all right. Um, you can see where the master cylinder is leaking. I don't know if that uh, light from this flashlight is making it kind of blink, but um, that's where it's leaking up under here. So we're going to take that apart and see if we can replace that. And it does look like it might be pretty easy to do on the bike, just removing the screw here. I think that's the screw that holds the switch on. That's the adjustment screw. So you could probably just pull the pivot screw out for the handle. I'll have to look at it a little bit better and see which way we're gonna go ahead and do this. Um, but it looks like it might be pretty easy to do right on the bike. Um, I'm just going to cover up the paintwork because I don't want more damage to the paintwork than already is. So, um, yeah, let's see what we can do. All right, so the first thing I did, I removed the cap, sucked the brake fluid out. And so I think next I'm going to probably remove the switches because I think we are going to remove most of this off the bike uh, just to make it easier. Okay, the next thing I did was I used a 14 millimeter wrench and took the uh, banjo bolt, bolt loose on the brake line and then I just took a little plastic baggie that I had and zip tied it around it um, just so that you know keep all the fluid from dripping out onto the paintwork um, and making a mess. All right. All right the next thing we're going to do is there's a small screw up under here under the switches. I don't know if you can quite see it there. Um, but we're going to remove this small screw here next to um, help remove the switches. All right, with that screw out of the way, your switches should be able to come down easily and be out of your way. Okay, next what I did was I removed the screw that was right here that holds the um, throttle cables in place. So I removed that screw. All right, so next then I loosen this hex nut here. Um, it's Allen, it's a four millimeter Allen, I believe. Yep, four millimeter Allen. So loosen this up and this should let your handlebars kind of, or your grip, your brake control rotate some. Okay, I hope you can hear me okay. My neighbor started mowing the grass, but I finally got the bolt out of here that holds the handlebar on. It's a five millimeter, but mine was already partially stripped from, I guess, a previous owner. I did have to take the switch off too. It's too small, um, flat blade screwdriver. 
Um, mine was stripped out. I had to use an easy out to finally catch it and pull it out. So I just flipped this all upside down so I could see it. So I'm going to cut this tie strap off that I put on here um, so I can remove the handlebar or move the uh, hand control out of the way and start to work on this. All right, so I removed the hand uh, control out of the way and I just put a little bit of air pressure to this to pop this thing out. And it popped it out most of the way. There you go, all the way. Watch how it comes out. So you've got your spring and then your little valve that sits in there. And I'm gonna check out inside and see how bad it looks, but I'm sure that one of these seals just one of these seals just wore out from use. So um, let's take this over to the bench where the other parts are. All right, I went ahead and cleaned out the master cylinder. I went over it with a little bit of super fine, like 2000 grit wet sandpaper, wet dry sandpaper. And there was a little bit of a buildup right here and got that all smooth. I don't have a brake hone um, and I called around locally and no one had them. So we'll hope this does the trick. All right, here's the kit that I'm using. It's a performance components kit. There's the number off of it. I got it off of the Amazons. Um, so here's the old one and here's the new little cylinder that goes in and it comes with a new spring also and the um, little screw that holds this piece in. Now I noticed on mine when I got it that there's a scratch going down the side of it so I don't know if maybe they rebuild these um, or what but what I'm going to do is I'm going to lube this up really good with some brake fluid put the spring back in it and put it back in the bike and hope and pray that it doesn't leak and that I can get all the bolts back in and hopefully never have to take it out again. Okay, I'm not going to use brake fluid to lubricate the seals. It comes with this brake paste and it says to um, on the primary seal back here to Put a lot of lube on it. I'm guessing that's so that seal doesn't fold over as you put it in. And then it says on the front seal to lightly lubricate it. We're just going to use a little bit of this extra off the edge and lightly lubricate the front seal. So we've got them both lubricated. I'm going to set it aside, make sure it doesn't get any garbage on it, and find some something to cut the seal, uh, cut this bag again. What happened to it? Oh, there's my razor blade. Um, and get the spring. Definitely don't want to introduce any more contaminants. All right, spring, you can see how much bigger the old spring is, or the new spring is compared to the old spring. So I'm guessing that's just really worn out. And the new spring just goes in there. And we're gonna go put it on the bike. This new screw out. Also, and let's go put it on. All right, so I don't know how good your view is there, but I'm gonna try to get this back in here very carefully. 
kind of wiggle it around. Feel that spring seated. All right, and then take the screw, put the screw in the other the side here. And I forgot to grab my Allen. Let's see if I can get it with my fingers here. Alright, so I'm going to very carefully poke this back in here. Okay, seems to be moving back and forth freely. All right, so now we're going to have to uh, go over and get the new boot that it comes with and put that boot on. I don't know if you can see the boot goes on the handle here. All right, so here's the new boot. Put that boot on. Get it to slide all the way down where it goes. that in place and get the uh, pin that's stuck on the easy out still Just going to start that a little bit to keep it in place. And then I'm going to try to work this seal or this boot around. All right, that seemed to work. Let's get the boot pulled down. All right, so we got the boot on, just had to kind of work it with the punch just a little bit to be very careful not to tear it. And now we're going to line up, put this pin back in. All right. Hopefully I can get this pin in and get this easy out back out of it. There we go. 
All right. So, um, like I said, I had to use an easy out to get this bolt out. I'm going to try to look online and order a new pin for this. Um, but for now, I'm going to have to use this. So I'm going to have to try to, I cut a little groove in it to try to see if I could get a screwdriver in there to turn it. So I'm just going to have to put a screwdriver in there and try to tighten it up some, but not over tighten it. I'll use this easy out method to get it out again. Um, but I think we're good so far there. Um, so I'm going to try to find something to tighten this up and then we'll come back to putting the brake hoses on and the throttle cable and put this whole thing back together. All right, here's the two screws for the brake light switch. So we're just going to put the, have to rotate this over a little bit and put the brake light switch back on. Rotate a little more. This little screw is lined up in there. It's just a little flat blade screwdriver. I'll bring it around here in a second and show it to you. I know you can't see anything there. It just has these two screws that go into the bottom here to hold your brake light switch on. All right, so we've got that in place. We'll tighten these down. Snug those up. And now we're going to rotate this around, tighten this screw back up. I'm not sure what this screw is actually for. But I loosened it. I thought it was something to do with the housing in there. Just going to use this flat blade to tighten this up for now. Um, I'll tighten that up with the Phillips in a minute. Um, so next we're going to put the um, accelerator cable piece back in here. I'm going to lube this up a little bit and put a little bit of grease on this. Now BMW says that these cables don't need to be lubricated. So I'm not. Um, they're supposed to have a Teflon coating in the accelerator cable themselves that don't need to be lubricated. So um, let's get the little plate to cover this back up and we'll put that on next. All right, so I got the accelerator cable back in. It's releasing nicely. All right, so next up, we're going to, uh, let's see, I've got one other screw over there. What's that screw go to? Oh, I think that's the one that holds the switch in. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tighten up this, um, grip here so this whole assembly doesn't move when you hit the accelerator cable. Okay, just tighten that down so everything's in place. Now we've got the uh, controls to go on here. Just snaps in there like that. And then it has a screw that goes in underneath here. You can see if you can see where I'm pointing. Now I got to a grape with BMW on using Allen screws on their brake stuff where brake fluid could leak down on it and harden up and strip out. So be very careful when you're doing this. Um, mine was in bad shape. So, all right, so get that on. My buttons move freely, my accelerator cable moves freely. So now we're going to put the brake hose back on and the banjo bolts. And we should be ready to put some fluid in here and start bleeding these brakes. So let me uh, find something to cut that zip tie with. Cutting the zip tie off. So a plastic baggie out of the way 
and then we'll line these band this banjo bolt up. All right, sorry about that. My GoPro battery died, but I put the cover back on. I got the banjo bolt on underneath, filled it with brake fluid, pumped it up. Now we're going to bleed the brakes. So around here, I have an 11 millimeter wrench. I already made sure I could break the bleeder loose. So I've got that loose and I've got a hose going into an old Gatorade bottle. So what I'm going to do is pump the brakes up, break this loose, squeeze it, tighten this back up, release the handle, and pump the brakes a few times and do this process a couple times to make sure we've got all the air out of it. And um, then we'll just top off the fluid and make sure everything is good to go. I'm going to sit you down here so Hopefully you can see this okay, at least on this side. And I've already um, pumped the handle up over there. So we're gonna break this bleeder loose and then squeeze the handle. See if I can reach both of them at the same time. Squeeze the handle. Pump the handle a few times, break it loose. It's coming out really um, clear and with not any air in it. I don't know if you can see because this hose that I'm using is a little discolored, but I'm not getting any air out of it, which I didn't think I would get much because of, you know, we didn't, uh, we broke the banjo bolt loose, but um, you know, didn't push any fluid through it and anything like that. So this one looks good. Handle feels really good. Um, I'm going to try the other side now and I'll take you over there with me on that one. All right, set up on this side. Brake feels really good. I'm gonna break this loose, squeeze it. I did see a little bit of air come out of that one. And no air that time. Pump it up a few more times here. Do the same thing again. And no air, it's coming out clean. Brakes feel really good. I'm gonna do it one more time just to make sure. And no air. All right, so the brakes feel really good. And uh, we'll take it for a test drive later on. It looks like it's getting ready to rain here. And um, so <clears throat> I think that's going to be it. Um, I hope this helped you out. Yeah, hope it fixes this brake problem that we had here and hope it helps you out if you have any brake problems on yours. So please like, subscribe, there'll be more to come. If I have anything come up after the test drive, I will let you know. Thanks for watching.